RPGs are dead. That's what I would say if I wanted this video to be more provocative and clickbaity. But it is true, at least in some sense. They did change quite a lot, and some of the parts that made them so unique are slowly fading away. Morrowind and Fallout New Vegas are one of the last RPGs that, you know, actually focus on the role-playing and their mechanics are built around that experience fully. Modern RPGs are more like action adventures with some RPG mechanics. In Witcher 3, for example, you are bound to play as Geralt the Witcher. You cannot make choices that Geralt would not make, and you are forced to play as a Witcher. You cannot choose to be, I don't know, a forest ranger who specializes with setting traps and using a bow. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you are forced to play as Arthur. You can choose if you want to play as Honorable Arthur or not so Honorable Arthur, but you are bound to his character choices and his game style. Skyrim might have given you a freedom to create your own character, but at the same time it was a very much mechanically shallow game, with barely any freedom to make decisions and your own unique impact on Skyrim, at least without a heavy usage of mods. I really enjoyed making my previous video on immersing yourself in Morrowind, and I saw some positive feedback, so I decided to continue with Fallout New Vegas, this time as an example. So, let's get into it. The character creation, just like in Morrowind, is very fast. The entire section, if you skip the Rorschach test, is around 1-2 to two minutes. Of course, if you know what you're doing. I would recommend to just pick things that sound instinctive and cool, let's say, and just go on with it. And that is because Good Springs is one of the best tutorial zone ever created in an RPG. The game not only teaches you in a very organic and in-universe way how to play the game, but also what to expect from it. You can be good at talking even without high charisma, as you will learn that your expertise in a field can win you some conversations, for example. All skills are useful. There is no wrong build. Don't try to find the meta. Don't Google the best weapons and how to find them. Just, just immerse yourself. After playing a bit in Good Springs, you will learn the feeling of the game and what to expect, so you can attempt now to leave, and the game will give you a second chance at changing your character. Or you can, for example, start again, which I would recommend, because the game not only gives you some starting item based on what you're good at, the merchant in Good Springs, the first merchant that you meet, will also have the equipment slightly tailored to your game style. For example, if you don't pick energy weapons, there is a high chance that the merchant will not have any energy weapons in stock in the beginning. For flavor, character choices and ease of creating, I would suggest making a short backstory to the characters you want to play. And to give you some ideas, I will present to you my characters so you can be inspired by them. Let's start with my first character. His name is Lucky Luke. As you may guess, I might have taken some inspirations from somewhere. Lucky Luke is a cowboy, a bounty hunter. He chose the path of the courier as he was already traveling a lot, bounty hunting. So as a side job, he decided to deliver packages for his customers. What he ever really wanted from life is just to get a lot of money and retire someone that is comfortable, safe and fun. So. He chose New Vegas and Mr. House as his employer, as he knew that if he would manage to get into his good side, he would be able to live on the strip and retire there. As his name suggests, Lucky Luke is extremely lucky. I've maxed out his luck, and yes, that is a absolutely viable build. His primary skills are guns, specifically revolvers, as he's a really good gunslinger. A very lucky gunslinger, you may say. As a proper cowboy, he is carrying a 44mm mysterious magnum. A gun so mysterious that bends the fourth wall with a western music. But for longer ranges, he also carries a Winchester rifle with a scope called a brush. He, uh, he might have borrowed that one. 
And of course, he also carries a side weapon in case of emergency called Lucky. How fitting. He, of course, decided to work for Mr. House, as he does not really like the NCR authority or the Legion brutality. Once he arrived on the strip, he decided to, you know, have some time off and managed to gain a fortune playing in casinos. And he might have been able to finally retire until... Okay, that's that. No more games for you. Go rob the tops. You're done here. Okay, next one is Trace, a pink hair, powerfulist maniac who lives by a very simple life rule. Punch first. Ask questions while punching. As you can see, she might have also been inspired by someone. Vi, I, I mean Trace, is a barbarian. Basically, she was raised and tutored by the White Legs native tribe from the north. She only knows how to punch, throw objects at people and survive. During one hunt, she killed another hunter that stole her game and decided to run away from the tribe to uh, avoid any consequences. She couldn't stay long enough in any one particular place with her brutish nature, so she decided to be a courier, mostly because she needed to move constantly and avoid a horde of bounty hunters trying to get her after her numerous misadventures. She is an absolute beast in melee, one-shotting most things in the game and turning them into a pink pulp. That's why she changed the color of her hair, because it was very annoying to constantly wash them after smashing people to bits. Why can't I get a straight answer? It's always just, oh no, stop hitting me, ow, my face! Initially, I wanted her to be a purely melee character, but... Uh... In a world full of automatic weapons and grenade launchers, that causes some problems. So I decided to pick the explosive skills, as that would mitigate her range problems and, you know, still be within her character to use. She decided to join Caesar's Legion. Caesar? Kaiser? You were the mark of Kaiser. By order of Kaiser. Of Caesar's legion. Something is wrong with Kaiser. Caesar, Caesar. Anyway, this guy. The guy who decided to make his midlife crisis of being a ROM enthusiast into a actual thing. Strength and brutality being their main ideology, she decided to join and purge the Mojave Desert from weaklings that she deems unworthy. Joining the legion would also give her the protection from all those pesky bounty hunters. And for the last one, a bit more of a original character. Tug is a high-tech infiltrator. He specializes in stealth and advanced technology, being proficient both with energy weapons and hacking terminals. His backstory is shrouded in mystery. He came from the deep north, running away from something, or maybe he was just sent here for some reason. He decided to become a courier because it really suited his skills. He could move undetected very effectively, and those few who would dare to cross him and fight him had little chance with his hard-hitting plasma weapon. He is a silent type who decided to join the Brotherhood of Steel, not because he cared for their mission, but because they could supply him with high-tech weaponry and ammunition. The moment it will be convenient for him to leave, he will do so, and no one will even notice that he disappeared. As for the main faction, he decided to support the NCR, wanting stability and order in the region of a self-governing Mr. House and dumb British slavers from Caesar Legion. The Nightkin supermutants might have been the scary ghost of the Mojave, but Tag is a nightmare for the Nightkin, hunting them relentlessly for their stealth boys. So, here it is. Some examples that can give you ideas on how to roleplay in Fallout New Vegas. Like always, remember, don't try to join every single faction and don't do every single side quest. Do things that would fit your character. It is okay if you cannot finish a quest or you don't meet the requirement to perfectly end a questline. It's not a game with a scoreboard, don't look for a meta build. 
playing in normal difficulty is absolutely fine without any build optimization. So, I hope that you will have a lot of fun exploring the Mojave wastelands and making your mark in the Great War for Nevada. And remember to properly hydrate yourself with the delicious Sarsapilla beverages. Have a great day.